Welcome to Tech Wolf, your quick roundup of some of the top technology news stories from across the globe. This month, we bring you the latest on Uber's colossal hack, Alphabet's $1.8 billion court battle, and much more. For this episode's Hot Topic interview, we spoke to Des O'Connor about digital selling and the opportunities and challenges for technology startups and scale-ups. First though, here are your top international stories. UK authorities are looking into a hack suffered by popular ride-sharing app Uber. The breach, which exposed the information of more than 50 million users from across the world, was concealed by Uber, which paid hackers $100,000 to erase all the stolen data taken last year. The Independent Commissioner's Office said Uber's concealment raised huge concerns around its data protection policy and ethics. Uber has so far estimated that approximately 2.7 million people in the UK were affected by the breach. Overall, it hasn't been a good month for Uber, after accusations implying it has been operating a sophisticated unit to steal trade secrets surfaced this month. The new revelations were made in a 1.8 billion court battle with Alphabet self-driving unit Waymo, in which Uber is accused of stealing confidential tech for its own autonomous car projects. The testimony offered in court during a pre-trial hearing suggests the dispute with Google's parent company may be part of a wider effort by Uber to improperly draw on work done by its rivals. Social media giants Facebook and Twitter have said they will cooperate with a UK probe into Russian meddling in the Brexit referendum to find out exactly what happened on their platforms in the run-up to and following the referendum. Siemens, Airbus and Rolls-Royce have come together to develop hybrid electric engine plane technology in a bid to push towards a cleaner aviation industry. The EFAN X program, as the project is known, will place an electric engine with three jet engines on a BAE 146 aircraft. The firm say they want to fly a demo version of the plane by 2020 and a commercial application would follow by 2025. Last but not least, Bitcoin has been at it again. The cryptocurrency made headlines yet again after it hit an all-time high of $10,000 and went over the $11,000 mark on the 29th of November. That's it for our top global tech news roundup, but keep watching to see this episode's Hot Topic interview. We spoke with Des O'Connor from EY about digital selling and the opportunities and challenges for technology startups and scale-ups. Hi Des, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Um, just to start off and to give the interview a little bit of context, can you tell me a little bit more about what you do at EY? Yeah, sure. So I sit within the strategy team in our advisory practice. Um, at the moment, I'm the EY WaveSpace lead. Um, EY WaveSpace is a new global initiative of 16 innovation centres based in the hottest cities throughout the world. And I'm here in, in London looking after our London centre, which is the focus for customer experience and innovation. And the idea behind WaveSpace is that we can co-create new solutions with our clients and leverage off the strength of our um, network. And each centre uh, focuses on a different area of disruptive technology, such as blockchain, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, data analytics. Um, and, the, and our London centre is the customer-centric uh, side of things. And so for the digital selling side of it, it's really important that we help our clients understand the importance of social selling and the impact that it's happening on the traditional way that we engage, but also sell to our clients. So you've just mentioned digital selling and it's actually what we're here to talk about today. But it's such a broad topic, can we just break it down a little bit and perhaps would you be able to define what it actually is? Yeah, so digital selling is the process whereby organisations can leverage professional networks to engage with their clients using uh, platforms. And there's a number of different platforms that are out there in the marketplace that people can leverage the strengths of that. Um, and as a result, there's been a fundamental shift in consumer behavior patterns. And consumer loyalty from a B2C perspective has, is, is on the decline because people can move around to more responsive organizations and see the opportunities and products that are available to that via social. Um, and as mobile technology is becoming more prevalent in our day-to-day -day lives, people are able to research and gather information really seamlessly, which has now resulted in a multi-omni-channel experience for the consumer, 
But what we're seeing in EY is that the consumer patterns that are happening from a B2C perspective is now starting to impact the B2B selling side of things. And organizations are starting to struggle with the grapple and the understanding of how they can remain relevant in the marketplace, but also use these platforms to sell these products to clients as well. So it is a really interesting and exciting time and organizations and consumers alike are really interested in the topic. So clearly there are a lot of opportunities for um, startups to harness, but what are the specific challenges that they're up against? So I think um, brand loyalty is down, right? So people will shift quite quickly. The consumers are more informed now as well, so they expect a lot more out of the salesperson. And there is a statistic out there that between 50 to 80% of the consumer journey is already completed before they make contact with an organization or a salesperson. Um, so that's, that can be a bonus as well because cold calling is now practically non-existent and the leveraging of the social networks is, is more appropriate and it's more targeted. So people are expecting a lot more now from organizations in, in pushing information rather than organizations having to pull that information from consumers. So there's a lot more um, elements of engaging the people now at the right stage of the customer journey buying process. But as a result of that, the marketing and sales departments need to be more closely aligned to ensure that they're getting that seamless interaction between both of them so they can get the right customers and the appropriate amount of customers into the organization at any given time. It sounds like the lines between marketing and commercial are blurring and even more so. Um, but I just wanted to pick up on something else that you said. So you've mentioned different channels and specifically B2C sales and B2B sales. But what are the different approaches that people need to bear in mind when they're trying to target other businesses and customers? I, I, I think that uh, there's actually the opposite effect. Because we're so connected as consumers now to organisations and we have it on the move 24 hours a day, um, we're starting to see that millennials, are the largest proportion of the workforce at the moment, are bringing their experiences into work. So people are starting to blend their, their personal side of things with regards to research for products into work. And then as a result, the behaving patterns, are sh the purchasing patterns are actually shifting now as well. So this is actually then resulting in organizations having to fundamentally think of their social strategy and start listening more to how consumers are using social platforms and then adapt that to the organizational perspective as well. So for startups, there's a huge opportunity there to actually gather and proactively engage with their clients through the uses of social media. And social media has changed so much over the past 10 years, even five years. Where do you foresee the industry going in the next 12 months? Well, I think over the next 12 months, it's going to be an interesting one, right? I think for startups and organizations that are on their early journey of adapting this, it's really important that they create a culture that is, is safe for people to experiment and try things differently by using live streaming or by uh, actually putting content out on the web that you know can enhance the organizational offering. Um, but I think over the next couple of months, we're going to see a bigger push from the social platforms in driving new forms of activity. So there's, uh, there's filters now available, there's tags, there's live streaming. Um, but over the next 12 months to 24 months, I think you know the augmented reality side of things is going to become even more prevalent. And the user experience is going to become more tantalizing for people purchasing products online. So like for startups there, there's an opportunity to leverage the data that's available and to enhance their offering is really, really important because there's so many free tools online that you can understand um, how your hashtags are working, where your purchasing patterns are coming for, from, where your inquiries are coming from. It's scraping all that data and actually making it into a tangible output that can benefit the organization. So I think there's a huge opportunity for organizations and startups alike to actually invest in getting the ability right at the beginning so they can have a, a broad spectrum and a strategy in place. It's not just one element. I think there's, it's important to leverage your ecosystem and think about how you can create the end-to-end -end customer journey. And um, I think you know it's really important to put yourself in the customer's shoes and think about that engagement. If you were fresh 
and heard about the product straight off the street. Like, how would you go about that? How would you engage with it? What social media channels are you on? How do you go about building your social presence and the impact that it's having within that space as well is really important. The opportunities are vast, but it's surely up to businesses to harness them responsibly. Yeah, so I mean, I, I always think, you know, um, when things go well, it's great because the organization's making sales from it, we're getting the products so out there, right? But there is an element that you need to remember, and I think in a lot of social context, that organizations, uh, especially startups, can forget about that. When things go wrong, you need to have a policy and a procedure in place that you will then protect your brand. Um, you want to create a culture of innovation and opportunity for your sales team to go and explore that. And I think I mentioned earlier on around the gamification of it and, and creating that little uh, competitive advantage within the organization. But I think a nugget of information is around risk and governance um, and, and having the understanding around what can actually, what the firm can do when things go wrong and how they can leverage the brand name mm -hmm. um, because I think as consumers we're very responsive in doing research and actually uh, going from that end to end element but the whole power of the social network as well is that if things go wrong and we've seen a number of instances over the last two years um, that can severely impact the organization bottom line right um, that you need to have a strategy in place as well around trust and governance and the PR side of how to protect your brand. Um, which is critical, right? There's clearly a lot of things for people to think about and consider, but what's your top level advice for people to sell online? Yeah, so I think there's like a couple of things that are really important, right? So it's the ability to know your customers and anticipate their needs and stay relevant. There's nothing more, um, there's nothing worse really than having a platform that is not active, that's set up, that's quite out of date. Refresh it and make sure that you're updating it with content from the firm uh, or content from your industry. And do a market scan, see what your competitors are doing and try to do things a little bit differently and stand out in that perspective. But utilize the power of the network. There's so much there that you can do, but build on that and actually ingrain it in your overall strategy on how you're getting the product out there and just out of interest have a look gamify it within the organization if that needs to happen right and, and reward people um, within within the company that are using social to engage with um, with clients and see the impact that it has because we are seeing from an, uh, from our EY perspective that it is really prevalent for the large organizations to get on board with that and I think it's really really good use of different tools so you can do your your freemium model or you can actually go and actually invest in some proper hard hardware to, to get the data and, and prove to yourself that it is a worthwhile investment on that one. So it definitely sounds that it's about getting the data, harnessing that data and understanding it and then utilising it. A lot of food for thought there. Thank yeah. you very much for your time, Jess. No worries. That's all for this episode. For more of the latest top headlines, head over to www.uktech.news.